Hi, Robin Beaumont here. A quick YouTube tutorial about logistic regression. This is basically a practical supplement to Chapter 3 of Michael Campbell's Statistics at Square 2. An excellent little book. Packs a massive amount in a very small space. And because of this, he doesn't really describe how to carry out the analyses practically. So that's what we'll be doing. We're going to be looking at how to carry out analyses in SPSS, R Commander, and R. Basically, logistic regression is where you have one or more independent variables um, which relate to a binary dependent variable. So we have one or more independent or input variables and we have a single binary outcome dependent variable. You can think of this diagrammatically in terms of these simple little circles on the left hand side being each independent variable and they relate to or affect this binary outcome the single dependent variable let's look at some examples first of all time on treadmill save your emotion the number of seconds a person managed a treadmill test and whether they suffered from coronary heart disease um, changes on say a particular gold standard test like an angiogram or something so if they showed coronary heart disease changes in the angiogram we can class it as yes or no if they had coronary heart disease and we could relate this to the number of seconds they last on the treadmill test this is an example where we have occupation so we might have two or more occupations and then we find out which are the occupations how did they breastfeed beyond three months or not so we just class that as a gain a binary variable outcome variable given yes or no did they breastfeed beyond three months it's more complex uh, design here we have age group and diabetes type as the two independent variables and again, a single dichotomous outcome variable, whether they were alive or dead, whether they survived or died. So age group here, we've actually divided up into um, two values. We say it's itself, age group has become a binary variable. Um, we're saying, are they less than 40 or 40 or over in years? And diabetes, again, with another binary variable, we'll just say, do they have insulin dependent diabetes or are they non insulin dependent more complex example we have age sex and bmi and apnea score apnea index for the input the independent variables and we have the outcome variable whether they are hypertensive or not again hypertension is interesting if you measure it by using two interval ratio variables diastolic and systolic but then we decide whether the actual person is suffering from hypertension or not based upon those values and this last example where we have Apache scores which is a, an illness severity score based upon various measures taken about the patient and then their weight with an additional input variable and then outcome in this instance was and whether they had suffered from complications that were mild or severe. The important thing is to realise that the input variables can be interval or ratio or nominal. And they can be ordinal. Um, Campbell discusses this situation in the chapter very clearly. Well, if we read, but let's just stick with the interval ratio and nominal variables there. And then the important thing is the outcome variable, the dependent variable, is always a binary variable that is it can take one of two values yes or no dead or live mild severe crescent absence etc and when we have a variable can take two values it's also called a dichotomous variable as well being a binary variable another nice thing about campbell's book is that he has a section discussing the equations and i think he calls it focus on the equations i think it's really interesting and it make sure you understand the equations much more and the importance of various aspects of them 
So let's start off just looking at the ordinary linear regression equation. So we have y equals ax plus b. And if we take a treadmill example, we have y being presence or absence of coronary heart disease. Then we have this equal sign, which is saying it's a linear type um, association there. And then we have an error term at the end, the e, which, if you remember, the errors are considered to be normally distributed in ordinary linear regression. So let's explain at this. We have a dependent variable with the predicted value, which is interval ratio data normally in ordinary linear regression. And we have a linear relationship, and then we have a normally distributed error terms. We've got a problem here because we have our y value there is actually not interval ratio data, it's actually present for absence of coronary heart disease. So to cope with that, we actually fiddle around with this equation and then it'll be something like this. And notice we still have the two parameters there, but this time we're not given just values based upon the original variable. Here they are actually the logs of the odds ratios. So the logs of the odds ratios, the A and B values there. And we still have an error term, but we don't usually show it in the equation now, and we actually don't have normally distributed errors. We have what's known as binomial distributed errors. And the left hand side, which is that that little expression that frightens people, um, it's called a logistic or logic function. And what that does is make sure that the outcome is based between 0 and 1. So we only get values between 0 and 1. And notice that the x-axis goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. Um, and these values of 0 to 1 can be classed as probabilities, if you remember. And also notice that they tend to occur mainly down the bottom near the 0 or near the 1 value. So it actually divides up our results into two dichotomous values in a way. Looking at the left hand side you'll see we have an expression which is y over 1 minus y which is basically an odds value. Um, because it's the log of that odds, it's a log odds as I show there. We can what's known as exponentiate that value and get an actual odds value. And when we do that, the x-axis changes from minus infinity to plus infinity to zero to plus infinity. And the zero value in the log odds becomes equal to equal odds, which is one, if you remember. And you can think about odds as being equivalent to probabilities. Remember there's a relationship convert one to the other and an odds of one is equal to probably 0.5. So we can get out of our equation either log odds, the odds, the probability by doing various things with our left hand side. Let's look at what we get from the actual output when we carry out logistic regression analysis in SPSS or R or R commander. Well first of all we get measures of model fit. If you remember in linear regression, what we get concerning model fit is residual sum of squares. We don't get residual sum of squares here, but we get something which is analogous to it, called as the minus 2 log likelihood value. This minus 2 light, log likelihood value can go from a very small value to a very large value. Um, the smaller it is, as is the case with uh, residual sum of squares, the better it is. The smaller value, the better it is. The larger value, the more upset we are. The more discrepancy between the model predicted value and our actual observed values in our data set. You can use these minus two log likelihood values to compare various models. Um, say we had one with two parameters and one with three input variables to compare the difference between them. And when we do that, we carry out what's known as a likelihood ratio test. And this gives us a p-value. Um, there are some problems with this. And to take into account the various problems, which you can read about in a chapter, we can use a thing called Akeikis. Akeikis? Something like that. Here's some Japanese. And if someone could tell me how to say his name, I'd be grateful. Akeikis Information Criterion, AIC. 
and that again gives us uh, some indication of novel fit and novel improvement ratio. There's another measure as well called a Loschner Lemeshaw, Loschner Lemeshaw value. And this is where we basically take the data, divide it up into 10 or more chunks, and then compare the observed to expected. We carry out basically a chi square test on those values. And if you remember, what we want to do here in this instance is actually we want the values to be as close as possible. So a poor model fit would give us an associated p-value which was small. We don't want the p-value to be significant here. We want it to be as large as possible. What we're doing here is actually trying to confirm our model by looking for a large p-value. Um, there are questions about using this approach. Again, Campbell describes what the issues are very clearly. The important thing to remember is what we're talking about here is effect size measures. The minus 2 log likelihood, the K keys, information criterion, and the loss, Hoshner, and then we're sure statistic and associated with P value are all effect size measures in this sense. Along with those measures, we also get a table which shows us parameter estimates as you would do in the ordinary regression equation. So taking that example, of the um, treadmill time in seconds um, and the outcome variable was presence or absence of coronary heart disease. This is our table of parameter estimates. So we have here B which is equal to the natural log of the odds ratio and then we have the p-value associated with that indicated by the sig value there. That's just a p-value and remember what we do is we say if that p-value is less than our critical value, we accept it. If it's more than a critical value, we just say it's random variation. The actual parameter value is 0. So it's less than our critical value, which we take as being 0.05. So we accept the parameter estimate given in the table. And the important thing is we've got the exponentiated version of b there, which gives us the odds ratio of that. I'll discuss what that means when we carry out this analysis in SPSS and our, our commander. Unfortunately, I haven't much left time, so we'll do that in the next YouTube video. Bye.